hello welcome everybody to to our session um to our session and uh thank you for the jcon again one 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 another year with the great content thank you all for being i know it's kind of late in some part of the world um in my case is almost the starting of the day so let's let's jump into the session um let me share my screen Okay, so um, paving the road with Jakarta E and Apache Tommy. Um, my name is Cesar Hernandez, uh, and I'm gonna be happy to to share and learn at the same time for the for the next 45 minutes or so. Um, you are reading there in case you don't know who I, who am I. Um, the way I like to make these online sessions um, as interactive as possible is one simple rule, and is Send me any questions during the entire session. I don't like to keep the sessions at the end. Um, otherwise, it will feel like a recorded video of me just giving the information. But actually, I want to I want to learn from you too. Um, it's easy with plus one. We re we reply yes. And the equivalent when we say back in the days uh, uh, before the pandemic to say how many of you are using Jakarta E. So instead of raising your hands. Uh, plus one, plus one, I think is a good way to encourage you to type a little bit and stretch a little bit. Um, and minus one means no uh, in the chat. So that is kind of the dynamic that I would like to, to, to encourage during the, the rest of the session. Um, let's first, without further ado, let's see, let's jump right into the context. So the, the first thing uh, when, I, when I start giving this presentation, um, or actually all my presentation is, do we understand the context of what's going on with Jakarta E? So the first question I will say is, how many of you are already using Jakarta E? Plus one, please, on the chat. Uh, how many of you are not using Jakarta E? Uh, if you are not using Jakarta E, minus one on the chat, that will let me know um, how everybody is, is aware of the context of, of Jakarta E at, at, as a whole, right? Uh, and when I am asking you, are you using, I mean, actually, is, have you code uh, and run your code on a Java e, uh, Jakarta E server? So, because I know there are, are going to be plus one and minus one, I think before going further into the code demonstration, understanding the context is actually uh, is going to allow us to, to see how we can migrate our applications in the case that for the ones who are applying minus one. Thank you, Christian. I see you, 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 you type a plus one. That means uh, you are already using it. So I'm looking forward to share with you. And, and if you have some feedback from what I'm providing here, please share. I also like to learn during the sessions. Um, so if you, for those that are typing minus one, um, you have this context uh, of www, which which is not the, the world wide well, is is actually where I'm coming from, where am I, and where am I going with this change to Jakarta E. If you can reply this question from many uh, from many perspectives, like technical strategy, business, software architecture, architecture infrastructure, and then you are going to be able to choose the scope of your migration about what's going on uh, with Jakarta E, right? So you have you have been attending a lot of sessions. Um, Mary's session was really great. You are seeing this 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 topic also since a couple of years ago. The twelve factor. You start with microservices. Um, during the session this year, people is telling me, okay, we are finally get rid of SOA. We we are uh, uh, we are finalizing our migration to microservices. Other people learned during the during that the last 10 years that maybe microservices is, is good for one part of their entire stack, but not everything. There are still monolithics around and there is people looking for these 12 factors. So all this is part of the context that I shared on my previous slide. Um, and the other topic that you had been hearing during the conference and you will be hearing about during the conference is cloud native, right? When you search for Jakarta E and what is the evolution that Java E has been doing since 2017, uh, you're gonna hear this this topic a lot. And, and when you go to CNCF, uh, the Cloud Native Interactive Landscape, you are gonna be blessed with this huge diagram as with many other tools. And you are gonna say, okay, where am I? 
um, where I'm coming from and where I'm going with my infrastructure, my asset, my business value that are supported by the software that is running on top of Java E or in this case already Jakarta E like in the case of Christian. Um, so yeah, how many of you are aware of this change in the Jakarta in the Jakarta ecosystem, in the Java enterprise ecosystem. Please plus one for all of those that are aware. Uh, minus one for all of those that is the first time that you are attending a session that is going to tell you, hey, your applications will may need some changes before migrating into Jakarta EE. Um, feel free to send plus one if you are already working or already or already worked in the migration. Minus one if you are not uh, at all aware of this. So for analyzing the impact of this change, uh, I want to provide you with some numbers here. Right now, the, the latest Jakarta E version is 9.1. Uh, for all of those that does, don't know why Jakarta is now being mentioned a lot in the Java in the Java enterprise ecosystem is because back in 2017, um, Oracle donated J Jakarta EE as, as a project into Cliff Foundation. And then you saw after Java EE 8 release, there was a Jakarta EE a release which matches the Java EE release. Then we have Jakarta EE 9 release which introduced the first bullet that you are reading there, a namespace, namespace change. That means that packages that pre previously were known as Javax were translated into Jakarta. And the latest release of Jakarta, the 9.1, introduced support for runtime environments for the Java SE 11 uh, platform. Um, the three uh, flags for, for this release is platform for innovation. Why? Because uh, somebody's going to tell me, but there is no new feature being added since Java EE8, Jakarta EE8, EE8, Jakarta 9. And now you're telling me in Jakarta 9.1 that the only addition was the SE11 support. Well, that's why flag number one platform for innovation is there, right? Uh, because that will allow us to, 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 to embrace Jakarta EE10. So many people ha has, 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 is, is questioning, okay, why do I need to do this if there are no new features my developers can embrace? There are no eye candies that I can write, uh, start um, upgrading my code. Uh, and the reply is, well, there actually, you, you have a lower entry barrier at, this, at the, the next bullet is stating, because you will need to make this migration of the namespace. Uh, I'm going to share with you a couple of strategies, but you cannot run away from doing that migration. That's the first point. Um, second, uh, this will smooth the embrace of ja the, the future Jakarta EE10 that will introduce new features and so on with, with some of the specifications. All of this is a work in progress as, as, as we are talking here right now. But um, it's important because it will allow you, even if you don't release on production, the Jakarta EE 9.1 version of your application, of your microservices, still, if you have this in a QN environment, you're going to be ready when the new features arrive. So, uh, and again, you're, you're obtaining also uh, performance improvements from the, just the fact that everything is, 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 is able to be run now on top of Java 11. Um, work uh, in the case of Apache Tommy for Java 17 and, and, and around uh, the TCKs and everything within the Jakarta AE is also taking into consideration the Jakarta, uh, the Java uh, 17 version. So yeah, it's, it's, it's to be prepared is to be prepared for, for, for not being, you know, in a struggle position for one year. And during that transition, you will be ended up seeing Jakarta E10, Jakarta E11, and you are going to still need to tr make the migration of your namespace and you're going to be left behind because you are not ready yet for that. A little bit of context about why this Java namespace that already happened. Um, I added this slide just for uh, background purposes about the why of, of how we are currently, what are the changes that were allowed since the beginning, and what are the changes that are not allowed, as you are seeing there. So in, in, the, in the specifications, we took, care, we took care of 
all these aspects. Now is your turn and the tool and the vendor tools as I'm going to share uh, a PDF uh, in the next slide. Um, all the ecosystem has been working since, since, since this was announced, the Javax namespace. So it has been a community effort and now as a, as an end user, as a user of the technology, you are the next to, to, to do that. Um, this, 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 this report, this data sheet is available right now on the website. It was released at the middle of last year. Um, things has been updated. Things are being released as we are speaking here, but in terms of IDEs, tool set and everything from the date of this report and the latest update that you will see on the report, you will see that the, the communities and the ecosystem is adopting the, is, is embracing and, and enabling you to do this package migration. If you have questions about the understanding of the Javax to Jakarta in namespace migration, please type it on the um, type it on the chat. And in the meantime, um, we are gonna see a couple of approaches to do this migration. For example, I will throw the question to Christian. Christian said, okay, plus one, I am using Jakarta E. Um, so the question I will throw to you, if possible, if you can reply, you know, if not, don't worry, um, is how you did the, the migration of your application or are you starting a new project? That will be the question for you, Christian, if you can type on the chat, uh, because that will give us feedback about how are you already using Jakarta E. For those who are wondering, okay, I understand that there is the Jakarta 9.1 release. I, there is a package migration. What's this all about? Now let, 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 me, let me show you some um, approaches to do this migration. The first, the first um, approach is a bytecode level approach. Um, what this means is that um, basically, you, your source code will not be modified. You, don't, you won't need to produce a WAR file, an ear file out of this. Actually, there is gonna be a tool that is gonna do that for you. And then you're gonna be able to deploy that binary, if you want to call it like that, that package, that WAR file uh, into a Jakarta E 9.1 compatible, um, compatible application server. Um, so in this case, the first demo that the first demo that we are going to cover is actually a tool from the Apache community, the Apache Tomcat community, which is the migration tool for Jakarta. E. As you are reading there, the the the, the 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 scope of this tool is to migrate applications that you have currently running on Apache Tomcat 9 into Apache Tomcat 10, which is the version of Apache Tomcat that support this namespace change. If you take your current application that are running on Tomcat 9 or 8 and you deploy it just as it is into Apache Tomcat 10, it won't work because the, the, the package migration already happened in this latest version of Tomcat 10. So for that, you have uh, the link there. I'm gonna do a, a, a quick um, a quick demo for that. Um, so Christian reply, I try migrate from Jakarta 8 to 9. But I have some problems. Oh, yeah, you see that we all have been having this conversation. Uh, if you want to provide more details, feel free to 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 flush them in the in the chat. Um, uh, yeah, we, we like to say uh, in Spanish that, um, you know, when you have one concern, if you share it, it's, you, you feel less weight on your shoulders. Uh, and hopefully what we are seeing here is something that it can help you. And if not, feel free to share it also on the chat so we can all learn. Okay, so let's see what this bytecode level approach means. So two steps, really simple. Uh, you can go download the, um, the jar file and then you just execute uh, Java minus jar, uh, Jakarta migration, then the version, uh, the profile shaded and you put an input and an output. It could be a jar file, it could be a word file um, and then you are gonna see what's happened. So let's do this demo really quickly. Um, I'm here and let me bring my notes here. So this is the, this is the tool. I actually downloaded the latest version of the, um, the, the, the master repository. I actually built the, the jar in, in the case of the slides that I'm going to put available via my Twitter account and also, uh, as, as the resource in the, in, in the event website, 
um, you're gonna have the link to download directly the jar from the official Apache Tomcat um, migration uh, tool. But in my case, I, I, I wanted to try the latest and greatest. So if we see here, I have a demo application that I built a couple years ago. 2020 was the last commit, but actually this was created around, uh, let's see, maybe 2018. Back in that day, back in those days, this was Tommy Java EE7 demo. So the Tommy Java 7 demo is an application that as you're, as you're reading in the name is based on Java EE7. And it has, um, you know, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a music store API that has AGBs, JAXB, JAXRS, JAXWS, JBATS, Servlets, WebSocket, you name it. It's, it, it, it has an example of a, a couple of um, specifications from the Java E7 ecosystem back then. Um, so what are we going to do now is that I have the WAR file that was produced by that here. See, obviously if I decompile this WAR file, I'm going to see, for example, if I go to AGV catalog, I'm going to see Javax AGV singleton class if I decompile that. But what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to, pr I'm going to produce the Jakarta EE version of that binary, of that WAR file. And um, you see, it, it took one, one millisecond. So really, this is a, a sample application. I don't know the complexity of Christian um, application. It could, it could be hundreds, thousands of lines, um, and it will take more time. But um, here, we are starting with the premise that we are migrating, we are trying to migrate this application using by code level approach with the uh, Tomcat Jakarta EE migration tool. Okay, so this produced the Java EE, um, I'm sorry, this produced the uh, Jakarta Tommy demo war. So let's see what is inside of that war file. And for that, what I'm gonna do is actually, let me see, let me bring this here. Jakarta Tommy demo, okay. I have a the compiler here, nothing fancy, but something that is useful. And if we inspect the bytecode of that of that WAR file, let's go to the AGV class. You will see that the singleton class is coming from the Jakarta.agv.singleton. I didn't touch Maven. I didn't recompile my code again. I basically just took one WAR file and used the tool to to generate a second one. Um, okay, let's uh, let's see another one. Uh, servlet, for example, okay, Jakarta servlet. Okay, perfect. Let me know if that was not the case for the migration you had. Um, but um, Christian, but the, the, the point here is that there is an approach in which a tool can keep you really fast with an already migrated application. Is this the only way, Cesar? That means that this is the way you are recommended to do it? The answer is no, I'm gonna present two options, uh, actually three options, and let you to decide based on your context, remember the beginning of the session, uh, depending on the context, what's, what's work for you and what don't, don't work for you. Um, let me see. Jakarta, JXP, JAXRS, Jakarta, okay. Okay, we are starting to see this one. Okay, who can tell me why do you think the tool was not able to migrate this package? Um, I see some comments on the chat. I'm gonna go back to, to, to them. Um, but the quick answer for this is that, remember what tool are we using? The tool we're using is for deploying applications that are running on Apache Tomcat 9 or, or 8 and translated into Jakarta. For those that doesn't know about Tomcat, Tomcat is a servlet container. You can deploy servlets, you can deploy um, web sockets. Uh, but if you want to start using JAXRS, J, uh, JBatch, um, JMS, and, and other Jakarta EE 
um, specifications, you will need to use uh, either importing your project, the jar files, or adding the Tomcat leaf that, or use Apache Tommy like we are going to see in the example, or any other uh, Jakarta, uh, formerly Java EE application server. So this tool will work if you are already using Tomcat. If you, if, if within Tomcat you are using um, some specific jar files, you will need to double check that the migration was done right. But in this case, uh, this is out of the scope of the mic of this tool, right? Because this is um, RESTful endpoints. Um, that is not the case for Servlet. In the Servlet, everything was migrated. So that's how I am starting this, this first part of the demo, showing you that, yes, we have tools. If you're running Tomcat, you have one tool that you can test right away. Um, and again, if like, like in the case of the application I show you, this doesn't fully um, migrate our application. So we need to think in some other alternative. And that's when I'm going to um, share with you the next approach. Um, before going to the next approach, Christian say, I have problems when I combine JSF3 and use annotation data source. In this case, I add servlet from ser servlet form solve it. Yeah. yeah. It, in, with the, with the, with the um, issue that Christian has to migrate from Jakarta EE8 to 9, um, you will, you will see that he's talking about changing on the code. That is something that the, the current bytecode approach that I'm demoing doesn't fulfill, doesn't completely done because he, the, this approach only change package, but it doesn't go deeper and change. Okay. I need to change this annotation by this annotation. So, uh, we are going to cover, um, something that may be helpful for you, Christian. Um, let me, let me see if, if that works after, um, decision or not. So, Okay, that's approach number one. Then, and the the second tool that I'm gonna share with you related with this approach of bytecode is the Eclipse Transformer. That, uh, as you are reading there, is done is, is describing the same process. It's gonna to mutate individual class files from either jar or war files into an output that will be hopefully running uh, into into the Jakarta E9.1 um, application server compliance. I'm not going to show the Eclipse Transformers because I'm going to show you how you can test this approach using the Tommy Tri Transformer maybe employing. It's basically a fork, a fork we did from the Eclipse Transformer, but we added a set of rules um, because we actually use this Eclipse, uh, this uh, Tommy Tri Transformer plugin to migrate some of the Apache Tommy um, project. Uh, um, war files and binaries during the process of the build. Um, let me, let me show you, let me show you what, how we can migrate that application that you saw previously. Okay. So this is the, um, this is the, um, this is the code. Now I'm going to the code. So this is like an hi hybrid between, okay. I, I am able here to change something, right? Um, okay. Because this is some, because this is um, a, a Maven plugin, the only thing that you need to add to your code, um, Christian, this is something that you can try it and, and see if the rules that we added into this um, a fork version of the Eclipse Transformer fulfill the changes you were, the issues you were having or not. But for example, what I'm going to do now is just grab the same project that we were seeing and I'm going to go to the pump file really quickly and I added this plugin. That's it. The same code you're seeing here, um, as you can see here, this is still pointing to Java E API 8. Um, so this is the same code with the, with the, with the Javax um, namespace, but the only thing that I'm going to instrument into this code is um, adding this plugin. This plugin, what it's going to do is going to generate the WAR file for Jakarta EE 8 and it's going to generate the WAR file for Jakarta EE9, in this case, 9.1. Um, let's run this. Um, so let's uh, maybe, um, I think I did it verify. And here again, I'm not changing my code. I'm just adding a, a Maven plugin. And in the target, in the, in the target 
folder, you will see that I have one jar file, one war file, Java EE Tommy Demo Jakarta EE 9.war. Uh, let me see. Let's see the target folder. I have the, the original one, and implicitly in the build cycle uh, of that we are using with the Maven plugin, uh, migration transformer plugin, we are generating this war file. So again, what will happen if we bring this into the um, into the, the compiler? Let's check it out. Okay, so let's go to target. Let's check out, well, this is the, the Java EE version. It's nothing interesting because this what we already saw. For example, let's go to JAXRS, JAVAX, AGB, inject, JAVAX, WS, RS, GET. Okay, but what happened if we go now and open the generated Jakarta EE 9.1 version. If we decompile that, we will see that. Let me go here. Jack's RS. Now the, the the import for the rest endpoints produce the path get also inject and obviously the AGB singletons. Now these ones were also um, migrated. Um, later, we're going to see how we can te uh, test this really quickly within the same project. Uh, Mary did a, a similar approach with the Maven um, Liberty Run. In this case, we have the option for Maven Tommy Run, and this will download the Tommy server and so on. So, okay, um, this is the second approach in terms of bytecode. Uh, what we did again, it was just to add, um, just to add uh, a Maven plugin. And that automatically allows us to have two binaries, one for Jakarta EE8 um, and one for Jakarta EE9.1. If there is any questions about this second approach with bytecode level, let me know um, in the chat and we can continue. Um, then we have the other approach, the, the, other, the other approach, which is uh, source code. Let's do it. Let's. Cesar has shown that migrating to Java EE or Jakarta EE8 to Jakarta uh, 9 or 9.1 is just a matter of replacing packages, right? Uh, and and, and um, nothing that a seed in, in shell can fix. But um, and uh, but you, th there are some things that you will need to be aware of. Um, so let's 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 see this approach. So for that. I'm not gonna open my ID and run throughout these steps. I, I know I am aware of the timing. Um, for this, I use it IntelliJ as you saw as my ID. As we are talking right now, other IDEs, uh, NetBeans, Eclipse. If you have, if you if you are user of those one and know about that specific plugin, please feel free to share it. Um, but in in the case of the ID I use, I um, already have this tool to migrate, right? So I have the Tommy Java E 7 demo and I'm going to migrate. So it's just a matter of a couple of clicks and then it shows you to the right all the all the findings of the package migration. Okay, and I say, okay, that means uh, my session is gonna be about an IDE and I don't need to care about the, the, um, the bytecode conversion. But again, it will depend on your case, what you need to achieve, um, where you're going with the migration to Jakarta um, if you want to do a test really, really fast, um, I think you have already a binary that is running in production. You can quickly just um, manipulate via the bytecode tools and generate something to test. Um, or if you want to deeply see in your code and generate a binary yourself, this, this, this also is a valid approach. So after I apply the do refactor, because the refactor show me all the findings and I say, okay, do the refactor. Suddenly, uh, I almost start crying because everything was red, and I say, "Okay, what happened?" I that that's why we have IDEs, right? <laughs> everything should work, but it didn't completely. So, long story short, when I saw this, obviously the first thing, if if this is a Maven-based um, project, the f first thing I did was checking what's what what's going on, and I tried to compile and everything from command line to Maven 
uh, verify and or may, maybe compile. And the issue that I had with doing this using, uh, in this case, this IDE or any other tool is that it didn't change the POM file. Remember that the, um, the project itself has reference to something like this, Java e API. So these were not updated. These were not updated to the latest version that are already containing the, 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 the migration. So it just basically keep the context of the migration within the package. Um, we are not manipulating bytecode here. We are actually doing the change in the source code, but still there, there was the need to, to review what, what was not working. Um, let me see if there is any, any questions. Okay. Okay. We don't have questions. Um, so now that you saw those two approaches, bytecode level, I show you two tools and then we saw the approach of code, um, directly changing the code. And we saw IntelliJ as an example of doing the change for you, but it still was not a 100 and easy migration either. Um, still need some tweaks. Um, let me give you some dev uh, tools um, for your environment to, 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 to help you with this migration process to embracing Jakarta EE 9 or 9.1. Um, for that, I'm going to use Apache Tommy. For all of those that is the first time you're hearing about Apache Tommy, but you already know something about or have you hear about Apache Tomcat, you can think Apache Tommy which be the result of some in, uh, Apache Tomcat plus Java EE. Um, I, I, I intentionally don't say Apache Tomcat plus Jakarta E because sometimes uh, people within the room or in this case in the session um, is not aware yet of Jakarta E, but um, it's, it's a way for, for you to have your enterprise application running on, on, a, on an Apache Tomcat plus that Java E. That's, that's basically how I resume Apache, Apache Tommy. Um, okay, so then you have this great news, Apache Tommy a couple months ago was um, com complete the TCK test and everything. So it's a web profile compatible server for Jakarta E9.1. It's built from Apache components, microfile compliant, open source hosted on Apache Foundation. And feel free to join the conversation in the mailing list if you want to know more about what's coming after this um, 9 milestone 7 release, which introduced this Javax to Jakarta namespace change. Um, yesterday there was a, there, there is a email thread that I replied yesterday within the dev mailing list in Apache Tommy that actually what is going to be the next step after using the bytecode, um, transformation, because, uh, as, as I stated at the beginning of the session within the Apache Tommy project, we, we were, we, we, we have been using the, um, bytecode, um, tools approach so far. So right now we are talking about, okay, it's time for actually do a branch and do the change on the source code. So, uh, everything is changing as we are talking about, everything is improving. So we invite you to, to join the conversation. If you want to know more about how this open source project was able to certify for the second time, in the first time was uh, when Java E6 was launched. Now, 10 years later, uh, we are being certified as an open source project. But um, in this case, Jakarta compatible 9.1. You can visit the blogs. So the Tommy Maven plugin that I'm going to show you is going to allow you to instrument your code again. You can use also the, um, the, the Maven plugin, the Apache Tommy, the, I'm sorry, the transformer uh, plugin to to transform, to do the migration for you. And at the same time, you can integrate your Tommy Maven plugin that you are reading in the slides. It's actually um, something that is going to speed up your development um, iterations where you do a code change and then you try it again and again. Uh, it's continuous integration friendly, the approach, you have the documentation, but let's, let's, let's run a test um, in a demo. What it, this needs to be, what, what, what needs to be done for, for this to happen? The first step is just adding this plugin and then execute one command and you are ready to, to go. Very similar for those who were in the previous session, um, it's a Maven plugin, so it, it, it depends on Maven basically to work. You can specify and you can customize some things. Um, for example, let me try to annotate something here. Anyway, um, you can, Specify the Tommy classifier for those who are new to Apache Tommy. You have Apache Tommy Plummy, uh, Apache Tommy Plus, web, um, um, mic micro profile, 
Um, so you have different flavors, as I call them, from within one specific version. In this case, I'm using Plummy, which is the one who has, um, um, you know, um, most of the Jakarta E specifications. And also, something important here in the WAR file, I am also taking advantage of the previous plugin that we saw. And I'm saying, okay, I want to run this project in Tommy. Please download Tommy for me, execute my code, my binary generated, my WAR file. But in this case, I want to use the one that was generated from the Transformer plugin. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be matching my previous demo with this. Let's jump into that. Um, let's go back to this demo. If my connection is still working, something is... Oh, okay, I know what's happening. Yeah, I, I clicked the wrong... Sorry, I clicked the wrong bottom hidden zoom. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do now, let's add the Maven plugin to this. Let me see the timing. Okay. Um, Let's let's add this, and the only change I'm gonna do to the example we so previously is that I'm gonna say after we did Maven verify. Now I can I can just say Maven um, verify Tommy run, and um, you are guessing already what what's what's going to happen, right? It's gonna build the build the project. It's gonna make the the um, migration at bytecode level from the source from the source code you generate within the Maven lifecycle, um, and then it's gonna. In this case, I already downloaded. Otherwise, it's gonna download first uh, Apache Tommy. In this case, Plummy, and it's gonna say, "Please deploy the Jakarta E version of my app." Um, I have a couple of endpoints here that you can see. Um, in this case, we are using. Um, we, we are using binding for returning either um, the JSON version of or the XML version. We have a WSDL file here, let me call it, from JAX.WS, um, servlet, you name it, right? We have um, the, project, the project that we are using right now is, you see the context is the Jakarta 9.1 version. So, this is, this is a quick way that you can also um, speed up your development um, tooling um, and then you can start working in the migration as, as, as we are seeing here, right? Let me go back to, the, to my slides. If there are some questions about these two plugins that I'm showing you that are is basically the only change I'm making into my code, um, I'm happy to, to reply. Okay, I'm gonna... There is a little bit of background noise, so I'm gonna get closer with my microphone and reduce a little bit the volume. But hopefully you are still hearing me well. Okay, um, next uh, next topic. Keep embracing continuous integration and continuous delivery. This is more um, as a recommendation for 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 the overall uh, tooling and lifecycle of your of, of your of your environment. Um, I know it's hard. Let me remove the annotation again. I am back. I know it's 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 hard to 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 be. I don't know. There maybe maybe fifteen years, ten years, uh, reaching into a point that you feel comfortable based on the needs that you have with the CDI, uh, with the with the continuous delivery and continuous integration. But again, it's gonna help you to cut technical dev in the future after you are um, fully on on Jakarta E. Um, it's going to improve communication, reduce over communication or improve if there is lack of communications, visibility. And the question is, are you ready for Jakarta E10, right? Um, if you have followed all, all, the, all the little recommendations I have shared with you, all that is in the, in the, in, in the same path and that, that's the title of the session and the road to be prepared for Jakarta E10 because as fast as... as as fast as new features are gonna start appearing, as fast as we as a developers um, or architects are gonna be eager to adopt them. So this is gonna prepare us for that. Um, yes, the landscape for continuous integration and 
continuous delivery keeps growing, keeps growing, and it keeps getting better. Now, uh, GitHub Actions, it has gained a lot of traction in a couple uh, years ago. Um, and, you know, the community at the end are the ones that are adopting or migrating from one tool to another one. So it's, it's worth to keep an eye on that, on that context, too, if you are talking about how to embrace Jakarta. Learn by sharing. Um, this is this is something I always like to, to, to add in my sessions. The best way that you can learn something is actually start sharing what you know, and then you can start embracing also um, other recommendations. Today, I will learn something from Christian, who says that combining JSF3 um, and using the annotation at data sort, he has some issues. Uh, when he was doing the migration for Jakarta E8 to Jakarta E9. So this is something that definitely the next time I'm going to be checking for new content for this session, I'm going to check out and, and, and take a look at that. How you can contribute to to the, to the session, to Jakarta E, uh, basically go to Jakarta E forward slash connect and there is a really friendly community waiting for you to say hi. How can I help? You can join the community, um, the community mailing list. Uh, you can subscribe to one specific um, uh, specification uh, mailing list. So it's it's the, the, the it's a green field for you to join uh, the conversation. Um, there are community meetings, as I as I was stating. Um, all those are recorded in the YouTube channel. You can have access to that. Uh, you can join the e for j top level project too within your as part of the of the members um you know spread the words by speaking at conference or blogging or making um you know streamings or with your local jokes what are the f challenges that you overcome when when you made the transition to jakarta e e and in the case of apache tommy uh, you can go to uh, tommy.apache.org forward, forward slash community, and you can share your migrations also, um, issues or, or victories with the community. Uh, you can improve documentation, uh, fix website issues that you find. You can go into the code, try to compile it. How do you did the migration via bytecode to be certified? All those type, type of things are in the email archives. Um, you can incre increase the coverage of some unit testings. You can do workshops as, as now in the online uh, still approach, they are really easy to organize and, and, and deliver to the communities. There are many, many ways to, to, to contribute. Um, some of the tools that I show you, I actually, actually, some of these links um, make reference to the tools that I show you. Um, and feel free to to contact the maintainers either from Tommy Try or Apache or Jakarta or the persons who are referenced here. Um, is Jakarta e community is welcoming you to 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 the conversation and say hi. Remember, um, you still have this option to say, hey, Cesar, I like this. I didn't like this. I think you can improve this. I really, this really helpful, uh, was really helpful for me. Um, in the event, uh, uh, in the event website, go and you can please give me your feedback about your impressions of, of this session. Hopefully it was useful for you. Thank you much for the timing. Um, the slides again are gonna be available in the website. Um, and the conference website, and also for all of those that follow me or are going to start following me at Cesar HGT on Twitter. I uh, usually, after each session, I deliver um, shared um, the slides in PDF format. So that's the content that I have to share for you today. I think we still have um, like two minutes or so um, for, for questions. Um, Feel free to send send those over the chat. And um, thank you very much for again for the invite for being part of JCon um, 2021, and uh, for all of you that are attending here. A big hug, and hope to see you soon in person. Okay, um, there are no questions, so thank you, thank you, Mary, for staying by. Uh, a big hug. Thank you, Christian, Andres, for, 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 for your question and your sharing. And um, hope to see you guys again soon, either online or, or on as things go back to normal. Have a great day or evening.